The last time I took an interest in something of this size was the Blade Torrent, and that thing was really cool because it was, it was really surprising performance in such a tiny little package. But if you've been watching me for a while, you know that I'm just not a fan of anything less than 5-inch quads or just 5-inch multi-rotor stuff in general. In the past, the electronics of these things that are tiny were just really horrible. The, the ESC boards were terrible. They were unreliable. They would wobble. They would, you know, dip around when you would try to pump, throttle pump and they would fall out of the sky randomly. And it's just really annoying to deal with. But fast forward to today, we now have a bunch of small 20 by 20 stacks with 4-in-1 ESCs that are actually reliable and do perform well. And Emacs does make one of the better options of these stacks and ESC types. Now, the reason why I've taken a particular interest in the Baby Hawk R is because this is a really well-designed, well-put-together craft. Emacs has been doing something really interesting lately. They have a crew of people in Los Angeles that are in our community. They're fully among us. They do everything that we do and they want all the performance that we want. So lately they've really been listening to this group in Los Angeles that are part of the community and the products that they've been making are much more on par with what we would want, what people that do this stuff on a daily basis that you know want the best performance and want the best everything actually want to fly. And this is no different. This frame and this design, the whole setup was designed by Brandon Cruz and it's really, really well put together. Okay, so let's start by looking at the frame design. I'm gonna talk about the props in a minute because they are probably one of the more important parts of this craft, but the frame is, is particularly interesting to me because it's, it's actually very, very original. Brandon Cruz is the designer of this frame and he's one of the people that works for Emacs here in Los Angeles, part of our community. I cannot stress that enough. How, I cannot stress how important that is because he really knows what we want. And so when you take a look at this frame design, you can see that it's a tiny little two inch frame. They will also have three inch arms for it. And I would also want to see four inch arms for it with 14 XX motor mounting pattern, hint, 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 wink, wink, wink. But the frame has independent arms and it has kind of this, um, it's well known sandwich chassis style. you can see here, it's got a 1.5 millimeter lower deck and then it has a two millimeter upper deck and it has three millimeter arms, which are super beefcake for um, a two inch <laughs> craft. So you, you probably have no chance of breaking this frame. So no worries about that. Um, the upper deck has soft mounting grommets for the 20 by 20 millimeter stack, which is just fantastic because that was one of the biggest issues with crafts of this size. Soft mounting a stack that's 20 by 20 is just a pain and it's annoying, not to mention finding screws that are even long enough to actually fit the whole stack. And then they made this beautiful canopy on top, which is really the best part because it finishes the whole package. It makes it looks, look finished and, and like an actual product, not like some hacked together thing that we've built. And it does actually protect a lot of stuff. As you can tell by all the scrapes that I have on it already, it does actually protect all your gear. The components inside, it's using the 20 by 20 millimeter uh, Emacs stack, which I think they're 12 or 15 amp 3S, and I think it'll also do 4S. Um, the 4-in-1 will do 4S as well, although I'll talk about that in a minute as well. The stack is great. It's a stack that, I mean, anybody from the community would consider using for a 3-inch or even a 4-inch of this size. It's, it's, like, it's like a good stack. It's, it's a real stack. It's not like a toy stack or some weird Banggood whatever stack. It's something that they sell and people buy to build custom quads, and they're good. And then in addition to that, it has a Foxier micro camera in there. So it, these are all components that we would personal we would use to build our own custom quads and the thing comes in at 140 bucks which is mind-blowing because you you cannot build a craft of this quality of this type for 140 bucks you just there's you can't get the the, the actual parts cheap enough to do that and on top of that the frame you cannot get a frame of this kind of quality for that you just can't there's just no, there, there's no way to do it so the fact that they're delivering this at an astonishingly low price it's probably made possible because they build kind of all the stuff in-house, except for the camera, really. But it's really a darn good deal. It has, I think it has a 200 milliwatt um, v VTX in there, and it has this one has the FreeSky uh, micro receiver in there, and it has RSSI wired into the flight controller as well, and it has a really nice RSSI readout as well, better than most things. I was never even able to get RSSI to work on my micro receiver, but whatever, that's another story. Um, I really have, I cannot, I cannot really find a, a fault with the thing. It weighs 88 grams, which is a little bit more than I'd like to see on a two inch, but I mean, you can't really help it. It's, it's annoying that you want, you want all this stuff 
She also wanted it to be light. But I think they've done a really good job at balancing the weight. And as I'll discuss about the props in a minute, that's not really that important. Um, the one biggest complaint that I have is this damn cap hanging out the side. And they are going to be working on moving it. I think they might be able to tuck it in back here. And the other thing is that they've paid attention to so many details that I'm not going to explain here, but I'm going to point out one detail here. They are planning on having three inch arms for this thing and I hope four inch arms as well and they've left enough slack on the motor wires in there in here you can see there's enough slack in there to put the three inch arms on here like I when I took apart the torrent and I wanted to put longer arms on it to, to run bigger props I couldn't because there wasn't enough slack in the motor wires I even wanted to design a custom frame for it but I couldn't because there wasn't enough slack in the wires the fact that they thought ahead and they knew that people would want to put three inch arms on this to run three inch props on these tiny little motors which is a fantastic idea by the way is just it's it shows that they really paid attention and it really is designed by people in the community that know what we want which I appreciate I massively appreciate and honestly that's the main reason why I've taken an interest in this is because it's not a it's not just a little toy it's something that it's as if you paid somebody to build it for you and they're delivering a perfect build like a really tight nice clean package build for you and you don't have to do anything. You don't have to do anything about it. It's got all the all the right parts on it. It's got the motors you want. It's got the stack you want. It's got the camera you want. I know I'm being super positive about this because it really it, it's like it's it's the most fun you can have in this hobby for 130, 140 bucks, and it's really astonishing. Okay, now let's talk about the props. These props were designed by Sage Thayer. Sage Thayer, as I think um, Brandon told me that Sage is pretty much full time with Emacs now. And he's designing props for them. And this is a two-inch prop. This craft ships with two-inch props, which are tiny. They're itsy. So two inches is nothing. I mean, look, the prop is barely bigger than the motor. But somehow, he's able to squeeze a surprising amount of performance out of a prop of this size. So I'm going to link a video in the description below of him discussing kind of the engineering and ideas and, and thought, thought process behind making a prop of this size. But basically... When you fly these little tiny things, you really have no performance. You have no torque. You have no power. You really you don't even lift off until like 40% or 40% throttle. It's really annoying. Like your throttle range is just weird, and it feels like you have no power. With this prop, two inches on an 88 gram dry weight. By the way, when you put the battery on it, which is like another 50, 60 grams, the thing has low end, which is just shocking. Like you you pop the throttle up, and it hovers at like 20, 25 percent like my five inch does and then when you give it gas it actually has go all the way through the throttle range the biggest issue is your battery because your battery i mean it has really good performance and they gauge and they geared this prop to go about 75 miles per hour top speed which i'm pretty sure it does actually go 75 miles per hour top speed on 3s 3s 500 million packs that's all i'm using on this quad um yeah, and the biggest issue is your battery's got to hold out. I only have crappy packs. I don't have any good packs. Uh, Piraflip was sold out of the better better China Hobby Line packs. So I've just got crappy, like, Infinity and some crap that I had from a Lizard 95 frame that I had from Banggood a while ago. And they don't perform the best, but they perform adequately. But I would recommend 500 to 600 milliamp 3S for this quad. I wouldn't really... I mean, you can run 4S on it. They told me the stack will do 4S. But um, you'd have to kind of retune it a little bit. And honestly, I'm, I'm just so not into just retuning and redoing a bunch of stuff. I'll just use it as it was intended and just not deal with it. And for 3S, it performs really, really well. This is, this is easily the best beginner quad. I, I mean, there's no, no wizard, anything from Bang, no $100 junk. To, don't get anything else. This is actually a good quad. It has all the stuff that we want, all the stuff that anybody in the community would recommend in a really cheap Packet. I mean, it's not even, it's not cheap. It's just a fantastic value package. So what you see here is that I've put um, larger props in the back because they don't fit in the front. 2.4 inches in the back. And if you've, if you've flown things of this size, I've, I've built like dozens and dozens of them. If you've flown things of this size, you know that just going up to 2.3, 2.4 inch props, it gives you kind of a lot more performance, a lot more performance for just a little bit more size, but it does make the quad bigger. That being said, I really wish the front arms were just like two, three millimeters longer so that it would fit 2.4 inch props in the front. When I put the 2.4 inch props in the back, I just immediately got more flight time. I got a little bit more low end uh, torque. I got a little bit more, tiny, tiny little bit more grip and they are quad blade four inch, pro uh, 2.4 inch props. It's just, it was, it's a better size overall, but for two inches, I, I can't even believe the performance coming out of a two inch prop. That being said, I'm looking forward to seeing a whole bunch of new 
two inch designs based around this prop because it is a really good prop. It's really durable. It's got a shocking, shocking performance. And um, yeah, it's just an overall good prop. You do kind of bend it up. You do have, I mean, naturally it has no prop guards or anything. You, I've bent everything. These props have been crashed dozens of times each before I replace them. And I just keep bending them.